Hi. Hi, hello, hello. So, yeah, I'm so uh, into computers, I had to bring my own on stage. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us. So, um, I'm completely blown away and intimidated by everything that's just happened, so I'm freaking out a little, but um, let's see if we can do this. So, here's the really long, complicated, crazy, a crowdsourced, rapidly documented report on TEDx Dumbo, an independently organized TED event, or an attempt at engaging you by talking about us. So, my name is Stephanie. I run an education program at iBeam Art and Technology Center. Um, I have an amazing job. I work with creative practitioners, and I've listed all the different kinds up there, um, all day thinking about how to engage people in creative practice. So it's like, ah, awesome. Um, so at my job, we use crazy words like crowdsourcing, participatory practice, rapid prototyping, um, words which I'm sure sound really jargony, but are um, really meaningful to what we do at my job, and I think I've learned a lot from thinking this way. So, I'm gonna to talk to you about a project really quickly that uses this crowdsourcing, participatory, rapid prototyping model to sort of help you understand what I'm talking about. This is a project which I'm sure, I hope some of you know in this room, it, um, it was an online art project um, organized by Miranda July and Harold Fletcher from 2002 to 2009. Um, so, it was web-based. They basically regularly posted assignments online for anyone to respond to. The assignments all had instructions that were specific, like say goodbye, and then um, they would ask you to document that action in a really specific way, as in upload a Word document, take a picture, do this, do that. Um, here's some examples of assignments. Um, so you can see they're kind of like out there and crazy. Um, and then here's an example of how the documentation is realized. So, Assignment number 39, take a picture of your parents kissing. Um, they asked the um, photographers to include the names of their parents, their name, and where the photograph was taken. So if you see on the right side of the screen, and you can see that scroll bar there, there's a lot of people that took pictures of their parents kissing and submitted them to this website. And then actually on the left side here, you can also see there's tons of assignments. They did this project for seven years. Over 8,000 people participated while it was online. The artist who created this project said of it, like a recipe, meditation practice, or familiar song, the prescriptive nature of these assignments is intended to guide people toward their own experience. Um, so this is sort of the, like, the big idea of this project, which is really beautiful. So this is an example of a crowdsourced participatory art project. This is a project where the, the platform was set up by the artist, but the actual content, the meaning, the experience was created by a crowd. Um, it's participatory, obviously, you have to participate to make it happen. The, ro the rapid prototyping bit is, it's, it shares a methodology. So it's this idea that, um, the ideas, the contributions, while they were thoughtful, they were more about action and intuition. Um, and more about just getting stuff out there. So I chose this project not because it's the best, the first, or the only example of a project like this, but because so many people participated, and it's such a great example of how you can move some people really easily to connect through creative engagement and create a community um, through really simple creative ideas. Um, and then through the website, the living documentation that lives on, the energy and ideas and spirit of this community is really well embodied. So, using this methodology as a mantra, as a template, and as a way of being, I want us, as a community here today, to rethink the way we talk about, write about, and share our work. Right here. Right now. <laughs> okay, so, um, while well, kicking around ideas of how to think about this process, I came up with this term rapid documentation, and then I Googled it. I'm like, this must exist, but it kind of does. I'm not really sure, so I wrote a primer on it. <laughs> um, so one, choose the medium. Like in the example I just showed you, they chose the internet. I'm choosing PowerPoint, or it's really keynote, but you get it. Um, two, set up a simple structure. So their structure was they put an assignment online, people responded, and there was a way for those responses to be um, reflected my structure, you'll get a peek at really soon. Um, three, identify a process for collecting, filtering, and inputting information. This is so key with any project. I mean, like, there's so many ideas, so many thoughts, blah, 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 blah. What is the story you want to tell? Who is telling it? And how are you telling it? Um, today, I'm going to be doing the filtering process, <laughs> but you're going to help me with the inputting process. 
And number four, and I think this is the hugest, is share it. And whether it's share it with your friends, share it with your learning community, share it with your students, um, share it online, share it in a gallery, share it in a book, it doesn't matter, you have to share it. This stuff does not matter if people are not engaging with it and responding it, and our work is good enough that people should be sharing it. So, the challenge today is, we're going to work together to create our collective interpretation um, of what we have learned and been inspired by so far today, which is a lot. Um, so for each speaker and video we have watched, I've created the following template to be filled in by us. So I put in the template the name of the speaker and the title of their talk, what they said they were going to talk about. I want to know from you guys the big idea that they shared. And I think as educators, the concept of a big idea, you get that. It's like, what was the really like, ah, that was it. That's what this was about. Vigor, not rigor, you know, whatever. Um, and then two things they said that excited, excited us, when we laughed, when we got a little teary-eyed, when we all nodded appreciatively, and then also the takeaways. So like, I'm gonna go home and like write poems every day, right? Um, so we have to do this super fast. I mean, this is a TED talk, right? It's like, just like plow through it. But that's cool, setting up, and uh, Mark was just talking about this, these creative parameters for yourself. Really huge and actually really productive. Um, so as each slide comes up, I'm gonna count on you guys call and response style. So if I say big idea, you guys are gonna like throw out some big ideas. Um, I'll capture a few and then we can move on. Um, there's still two authors, a video, and then um, Philip Courtney speaking after me, who's amazing and, I'm, and I need his stuff in here. So afterwards, if you guys can help me finish this up. And then no later than 4 p.m. today, I'm gonna upload this completed presentation to the internet. <laughs> yeah. Which, um, for those of you who are PowerPoint pros, you'll notice this is a really wordy PowerPoint, and it's because I really want it to be a document um, and not need a speaker to speak it. So, <laughs> so are you guys ready? All right. So this act one was how we live in the arts. And um, can I have the mic stand? Okay, so we heard from Michael Hansen, who um, said he was going to talk to us about the concept of creativity, liberation, and challenge. I took some notes to help you guys, but... So what, what were the big ideas here? Do we remember that early back in the morning? You can see at the bottom here, I took some notes. It's an ensemble of ideas. Anybody? I'll type it. <laughs> yes, creative inside and outside. Anyone else before I move on? Uh, not in sentences, but in paragraphs. Okay, wait, let's try this. I've never done this, this is amazing. All right. Um, not in sentences, but in paragraphs. I can fix typos later. Um, you need to be wrong. Be prepared to be wrong. Okay, so what did we get excited about? <laughs> it was a good, that was a good Venn diagram, right? <laughs> Yeah? Okay, we gotta move on now. <laughs> We're at that. Breaks and follows the rules. All right, this is awesome. I think in the next slide, we'll, we essentialize. <laughs> um, Sir Ken Robinson. What were some of the, he had so many big ideas. <laughs> um, a few big ideas from Sir Ken Robinson. 
So let's just say we don't go into, I'll just do C. <laughs> we grow out of it, uh-huh. One more. That was great. Okay, so what, when did, hmm? oh, literacy, sorry. Literacy. We got excited when? You told a lot of funny jokes, I wanna put that in. <laughs> Yeah. Sure, yeah. That sounds great. Sure. Okay. No, that's it, thanks.